This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I'd like to talk about histograms or what's known as the table generator in Megalog Viewer HD. In this first screenshot what we have is the typical scatter plot. You see these in quite a few different software packages. What they do is have RPM along the bottom some sort of load up the left side, in this case manifold air pressure, manifold absolute pressure. And out in the field I'm showing you just yellow dots, making it easy to see where the motor traveled through the, the operating range. This is the typical log viewer view, where at the top I've got engine speed, throttle position, and manifold absolute pressure. On the next plot down you see the wideband trace or AFR. If you notice, this particular one maxes out in an AFR of about 22. Obviously that is a place that is really not valid and we probably need to throw that data out when we do any analysis. So what I've done is gone to the fourth tab in Megalog Viewer HD called Histogram or Table Generator and I chose as an x-axis engine speed Y is manifold air pressure, and Z is AFR. On the right side, you will see where I've thrown out the transients and also AFR out of range. Notice where we have the downshift area, we don't show those 22s anymore because I've thrown that data out. So right before it went to a 22, this is the average that it was getting. So at any given point, such as when it came right through this area, the AFR as it passed through was on average 11.5. Some of this data will be rounded into this box. This is the full power max torque area and you can see that he's running about 11 AFR. You can see the manifold air pressure drop as he gets higher up in the power band at around 5500 RPM. He's down to about 220 kPa but the point is each one of these fields is displaying the average as you got to that box. So what we're showing here is on the left is what the ECU is holding for a timing. So for example at 70 kPa and 54.50 RPM the ECU is holding a 33.3 timing advance. The table generator shown on the other side grabbed every time the ECU passed through this box and rolled it into an average of 33.1. That's awful close to 33.3 we had in the timing table. These numbers are never dead on, but they're awful close when you get a lot of data. Here is the same basic view where we have RPM along the horizontal row. We have throttle position sensor in the vertical and out in the field again we have AFR. Those blue lines that we had before, the way you get those is right mouse click anywhere out in the field, tag history trace length, and I chose in this case about 10,000. That number depends a little bit depending on your data rate. This happens to be fairly fast data coming at us at about 100 hertz. And you can see where I've got transients turned on, startup and warm up is turned on, so it'll throw out that data. Once we hit OK on that uh, on the trace, what we'll get is these blue lines, and that's everywhere that the motor passed through the fuel table. You see we have fairly good coverage here. Coming across the top, this is a normally aspirated motor, and you can see at full throttle, I'm running about 13.6 or 13.7 AFR. That's a little lean for my taste, especially at 6,000 RPM. So I would add about 5% fuel in the fuel table in this motor up there but everywhere else is fairly consistent and nothing that would concern me. Now what I've done is brought a, a map from a Link G4 Plus ECU. This happens to be a supercharged or turbocharged motor because you see the map running from about 20 to 250. Along the bottom I've made the horizontal axis RPM or engine speed in this case, and I'm jumping at about 333 RPM per bucket. You can use the arrow up and arrow left button 
and make these breakpoints anything you need to match your tuning software. As it turns out, this guy is spending a lot of time from about 3,000 to about 5,000 RPM. If you're fighting fuel economy, that's where this race motor, you'd want to run it as lean as reasonably possible. You certainly don't want to waste fuel. You can also see on the right side where we are pulling out of the throttle and coming down into a downshift situation and we're averaging about 10 AFR. It's probably a little rich and will tend to load up the motor a bit so that if you want to get back in the power instantly it will not pull in quite as clean as if you'd make this just a little bit leaner. The way I did no color in the field is under table coloring and there's a tag down box and I chose no color. This is the same motor but now in the z-axis out in the field I've chosen injector duty cycle. You'll notice that the injector duty cycle is down in the one or two percent range in a downshift. At full power in the mid-range we're running about 70, 71 possibly duty cycle but at wide open full power we're up at around 83, 84 percent duty cycle. These injectors are sized just about perfectly for this motor. So now I've changed to injector pulse width. Pulse width is what you want to look at at low power range. And if you notice, I'm running about 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 milliseconds pulse width at that point. That is probably getting in the range that the injectors no longer have any real control of the AFR they may or may not be opening and that's why we were seeing those 22 to 1 AFRs or maxed out lean. If you notice at the top where we're at full power we're running about 20, 21 milliseconds. Now we happen to be back to the normally aspirated motor. This motor is an ITB motor and you will notice I've plotted RPM map manifold air pressure and volumetric efficiency. What we get is we have redeveloped the VE table that's in this motor. Notice how I have got a fairly consistent VE until all of a sudden about 90 kPa. That is when the ITBs come on song and you can see how this motor wants a bunch of fuel right there. So the way you fix that is let's generate a RPM throttle position sensor and VE table. Basically what I've done is created an alpha N table for this motor. I did not have to get back on the dyno and what it's done for me is now it's given me my VEs that I need to create a new alpha N tune for this motor. As it turns up you can select here down through the bottom right corner and copy and paste that into most tuning software. Now what I've done is chosen RPM, throttle position, and spark advance. Most timing tables are map based, but say you want to try TPS based ignition tables just to see if you get faster throttle response. It's fairly common knowledge that a throttle position sensor is a faster response than the manifold air pressure and the timing may get a better lookup on a race motor if it is TPS based. This is an easy way you can create a new table and experiment with your motor. I would like to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the guys that developed the software we're looking at today. And be sure to tag subscribe on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.